Good morning, dear devotees and friends. Today we'll be discussing about the Magha Kali. Tomorrow, the Kali Puja, so we'll have the, uh, the discussion on Goddess Kali today. So the special talk on Goddess Kali, so let us begin with a Pranam Mantra of the Kali. If you like, you can repeat after me. Kali 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 Maha Kali Kali Ki Parameshwari Sarvananda Kari Devi Narayani Namastute We will start this discussions today uh, remembering the incident that happened in the life of Swami Vivekananda. He was a young boy, as a 18, 19 years. His father passed away and he was in search of a job to support his family, his mother, brother, sister. He was not getting a job, though he was the graduate from the Calcutta University in those days. Still, he was not getting a job. Then frustrated, ultimately, he went to Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. So he was not believing the goddess Kali. But still he went to Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna with a belief because he heard the Sri Ramakrishna can talk to the goddess Kali, talk with the goddess Kali. So he went and prayed to him, said, will you please pray for me to your mother for a job? Then Sri Ramakrishna, he said, why should I? You better go, you go and you pray. Then only mother may grant you, you have to go over there. Ultimately, he went over there to the shrine and those who have visited the Dakshinesha, you know the beautiful shrine, beautiful temple. The moment he entered the young Naren, he entered, he found, oh my God, this is not a stone image. This is a living goddess. This touching the, the farm and touching the old sky. So wonderful. And he was overwhelmed. And instead of asking for a job or some money or support, he started praying for his liberation. Give me the devotion, give me the purity, like this. So this happened three times. And then only this young man, who was completely influenced by other thoughts, and who never ever believed that God can be in the stone image, accepted that. Because he saw it himself. He talked to the mother, he felt, he realized. And what happened? That is also the, sometimes we ask the question, what happens after God's realization? And we saw in the life of that young boy who realized that God he was full of joy. What is the result of God's realization? What happens after God's realization? The joy, tremendous joy, happiness. And it was so much so, he came and prayed to his guru, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Can you please teach me a song so that I can express my joy through songs? You know, friends, that in our home of harmony, every Saturday, we invite some of the speakers to give a talk on their own religion. And in the four Saturdays, so at least one Saturday is dedicated for music. Yesterday, a group of people, they came. The, the name of the group is Achim Paki, the unknown bard. 
They're very famous here in Chicago. And that group, they presented a wonderful music. Though the language was unknown to many of us, sometimes they were singing in a language that was not known to us, and sometimes they were singing in Bengali, which was, I know Bengali, but others were not understanding. But every song people enjoyed because the joy that was expressed through the music, through tune, through rhythm. So that is, so he came and he asked uh, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, can you please teach me a song so that I can express my joy about the realization of the goddess Kali. And the song that he taught, that is also very interesting, and he taught that, O oh Goddess Kali, the meaning of that song, that you are everything. Sometimes you are female, sometimes you are male, sometimes you are sound, sometimes you are white, sometimes you are yellow, sometimes you are black. That is the song. Why? Because the misconception about God is Kali. Even today, 21st century, even the Indians, forget about the Europeans and others because it is difficult for them, the new concept of them. The Indians, they know the Tantra. It is as old as the Veda. Even then, they are afraid to worship God is Kali. The one gentleman was telling, I went to a place, he was sitting by my side, I told uh, Monday we are going to worship Goddess Kali, if you like you can come. Oh Goddess Kali, oh, you are from Bengal, you people worship Kali. He was a Hindu. But still, he was talking like that. So as if the Goddess Kali is meant for some people, or it is something that people are afraid of. One Hindu temple I was visiting in America, then there were so many gods and goddesses. When I asked them, don't you keep the image of Goddess Kali? They were, oh, no, no, no. The Goddess Kali may create another misunderstanding among these local people. Because they don't know. A lady cutting the heads of all people and putting those heads as a garland. That is terrible, you know. That's why you don't keep Goddess Kali. And we said, it's a symbol. The symbol may be different, but the meaning is completely same. So that is exactly why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he worshipped Goddess Kali. Though they were in their, traditionally they were the worshippers of Sri Ramachandra. His father was a worshipper of Sri Ramachandra and baby Ram, Ram Lala. But still, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna came to Calcutta and he took that priesthood and worshipped Goddess Kali and he every time, everywhere talked about Kali. Why? So misunderstanding should go. Otherwise, people won't be able to complete their spiritual journey. Why it is so important, the idea about Kali, the knowledge about Kali, why it is so important? The spiritual knowledge will not be completed unless and until we understand the Goddess Kali. Those who are just curious about it, for them it is okay. Those who don't care about it, for them it is okay. But those who are sincere to develop the spiritual knowledge, they must know what is Kali. Why? Because it is like the knowledge about electricity. The one of our devotees is an electrical engineer. So the engineers are there. They know about the electricity. They can write about it. They have read about it. They can talk about, lecture about it. But when it comes to work with the electricity, it is very, very difficult. The only bookish knowledge or the certificate won't help you unless and until you are really working with that. The live wear, if you touch it, gun. So that's why the both things are necessary. 
Why know how to like this area, how to do this? It should be this, it should be that. All that drawings are there, but who is going to work on this? So both things are necessary. Without knowledge, you cannot do it. And even with the knowledge, you should have to have the activity. The otherwise, you cannot complete it. In the spiritual knowledge also, it is the same. We know the, that God is all-pervading, everywhere. His consciousness, everyone is living like that. The God is all-pervading, God is one. It is okay. But what type of one? What type of consciousness? What type of God? What is going to happen? Suppose we don't bother about God, we will be surviving. Why not? If we have the food, if we have the shelter, if we have other things, we will be surviving. Why do we need God? It's an extra thing that we are. No, it is not. Without the God, the human being and the beast, there will be no difference. Without the religion, the beast and the human being, there will be no difference. This is important. So the knowledge of God is very, very important. About that knowledge, and then after that, if we are not practicing, then with the wind, the moment we are practicing, that is called Shakti, that is called power, and that is essential. You know that the great exponent of the Vedanta, the Shankaracharya, he even, he told that everything is nothing but the consciousness. Even that great Shankara, he wrote a wonderful uh, the poem, hymn, and that is Saundarya Lahari. So many of you know, Saundarya Lahari is a wonderful composition. And there he mentioned, Shiva Shakta Yadi Bhavati, Shakta Prabhavitum. Shiva means knowledge. Shakta, the power that is Kali. The power, it has been given the name Kali. If they are associated, then the action, the movement, the creation, and all these things will start, otherwise not. Nachedevam, suppose it is not, if there is no Shakti, then what will happen? Deva nakala kushala spanditum api. Even the great Deva, the Shiva, the knowledge, it cannot even move, it cannot even vibrate, it cannot do anything without the power. So this is the difference. From here we should start. Kali Tattva. Tattva means the truth about God is Kali. What is this God is Kali? Kali is an imagination. Now sometimes the rishis they used to imagine and you know that these imaginations because of the actions, the functioning, so it will be completely different. A father, he was in the army and he went for a war. And that father, when he is in the war, carrying the, all the guns and all those ammunitions and killing people, fighting with the, uh, the uh, firing, that father, if you look at that father, the children will be afraid of their own father or the mother, those who are working in that way. My God, my father is killing people. But it is his action. Now that same father when coming back in home, then casualing the children and playing with them, laughing with them, taking them to the, uh, for the ground to play, that father is a completely different picture. Similarly, the mother also we find, completely different picture. The someone, maybe the prime minister of the Great Britain, maybe a lady, recently she resigned, but anyway, suppose like that. When she is in that office, working, handling problems, giving decisions, so she is a completely different. When the children will come and see that mother, they will be terrified. Oh my God, is this my mother is working like this? And the same mother when goes back, is a different one. So Kali, the Shakti, the action are so many different. 
Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, we have to understand this, this is very easy. So Sri Ramakrishna said, Shama Kali is a benign mother, very good. As we see the mother in our home, she is so good and there only, no problem for the children. The Dakshina Kali, sometimes you will find uh, uh, tomorrow when you come, you'll see the picture that we worship or below if you go to the basement, we have a huge big picture of Dakshina Kali which was worshipped by Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, the benign mother. She is not doing anything, she is just standing over there and the right hand side is she is holding, four hands are there. She is, one hand is holding like this, another is like this. This is Avaya, Avaya Mudra. So don't be afraid, my children, I am here. And another is like this, what do you want? So giving the boons, Avaya and Ashirvada, so the boons he is giving. So that is the one type of mother. And second, left side, if you go, the mother is holding a sword and another, the human head, is she is holding that there. Why? Because two types of prayers are there. Two types of knowledge is there. So one prayer, I want health, I want prosperity, I want success. Then the mother said, come from the right side. The right hand side is all the time giving those bones giving the success in the worldly life. But if you want success in the spiritual life, if you want mukti, if you want liberation from the bondage of these all attractions of the world, then you have to go to the left side. And in the left side, the mother will be asking you to cut your ego. She's not cutting any hate. She is cutting the ego of the human being. Why? Ego is the bondage. Otherwise, we are that. We are the same consciousness. See, in the Christian tradition, they give a story that the God made that first man and the woman and asked them to be there. Then when the God came back again to visit them, he found that they are hiding, going away from him. And immediately God understood they have committed a sin. This is the problem. Instead of sin, if they had said or mentioned the developed ego, it could be very clear. Instead, in the Christian, there's a committed sin and they made a huge <laughs> books after books, lot of things on the original sin. But what is that original sin? Just not obeying God. If the God is the creator, he is our father, he is our mother. And that God, when we disobey our parents and go to them and say, I'm sorry, the parents are so kind to forgive us. Won't that father won't do? God don't do? Why not? No, that is not the real thing. They didn't commit any sin. They developed ego. The Hindus also, they say, God created man out of his own image. They were seen, but only to separate the God from his creation, they gave ego. I, I, I. And what is this I? We do not know. But each and every one is full of that. And sometimes it is so much so, they will be creating problem for the whole society. The I will conquer the whole world and then they will create the problem. This I. So if it is the, if we explain it this way and we can say it is only the I, the ego that is separating us from God. And that is the, the seed. And this I, this ego, is nothing but the reflection of God. So here it says that you have to understand Shankaracharya, he realized it. How? So he used to say 
where everything is nothing but consciousness. That's true. It's not Shankara's the past experience. Before Shankara in the Veda, they say that everything is nothing but the consciousness. Shankara also realized that. Then afterwards, when he was fortunately, he was telling that, giving the talk to the people, everything is nothing but the consciousness, and there is nothing less than consciousness. It, it, only a consciousness is there. And one day, when he was going to bathe in the Ganga in Kashi, he found a lady sitting with a, her dead husband, with a dead body of a gentleman. And that was, nowadays I heard and didn't visit, the, the Kashi's, all those roads have become white. But previously, a few days before, it was all narrow lanes. That lady was sitting with the dead person and the dead body is crossing the road and no one can go uh, on the dead body over crossing over like that. Step over that. So the Shankara said, Mother, can you please remove the dead body? Then the lady said, Why? You want the dead body to move. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, why are you are talking like this? Dead body cannot move. Well, why not? Yesterday, you were telling everything is consciousness. He said, everything is consciousness. The dead body is also conscious. Ask him. Ask the dead body to move itself. Then Shankara understood. He's not an ordinary lady. And then he started telling that beautiful stotra. If the Shakti is not associated with the knowledge, there's no creation. The power should be associated with the knowledge. Now this Shakti has been depicted as a lady, as a woman, as a goddess. That is completely different. They're completely different. So this is the way it stays. Now, the, from the primitive time, concept of God has evolved slowly, slowly. As the man, as the human society progressed, it developed. Finally, human society came into conclusion of the three powers. The, what are the three powers? First is, in the Sanskrit it says, Jnana Shakti. First the power of knowledge. The mother Kali wearing the girdle of the human skulls, she didn't kill anyone. She never ever killed anyone. It's the only story, fascinating story, so that the human mind, ordinary mind, should be attracted. But in reality, it was the symbol of knowledge. The human head is the symbol of knowledge, intellect. So obviously, the first is jnana shakti. Second is icha shakti, desire. The power of knowledge and power of desire. See, the Hinduism, 100% symbolic. All these wonderful theories, they are presented through symbol. Now, if you don't understand the symbol, it's very difficult. Now it is the modern society, everything, it's all symbolic they'll be writing. All the computer language, it is impossible to understand what they have written. But those who know the computer, they can understand the, how to decode it. And this decoding is necessary. So here, if you have noticed closely, if you go close to that image, you will find the Lord Shiva is open eyes. The eyes open, that is the Icha. When you don't want to do anything, what do you do? You close your eyes. You don't want to do anything. You close your eyes and that's all. But when you are thinking to do something, you open your eyes and then you start. So Icha, Icha means desire. And when the desire, you open your eyes. So the Shiva, the Lord Shiva, his eyes are open and he is looking. That is the desire, Icha Shakti. So three types of power combined then the creation begins. The first is knowledge. 
ज्ञान शक्ति सेकेंड इज इच्छा डिजायर एंड थर्ड इज क्रिया शक्ति वट इज द क्रिया शक्ति क्रिया शक्ति इज द एक्शन फर्स्ट इज नॉलेज देन डिजायर देन एक्शन आई नो हाउ टू कुक एंड आई वॉन्ट टू ईट फर्स्ट इज नॉलेज आई नो हाउ टू प्रिपेयर द फूड इज ज्ञान शक्ति सेकेंड इज I want to eat ichcha shakti if the ichcha is not there desire is not there even if i know how to cook i won't cook because i don't need it the desire is not there so desire is essential the lord shiva he was closing his eyes that there was no creation that the lord shiva opened his eyes that is the creation began why because ichcha shakti then finally it is kriya shakti and what is it kriya action in the moment it is action the three qualities are there sattva raja and tama the pure sattva the symbolized as white it can never work it can only think the shiva is pure white i wish i could show you the picture of that it could be i could demonstrate it so it is if you can imagine or afterwards if you go down and see the lord shiva is white why because it's a pure sattva sattva is all good but even though he is all good he can't walk so that work is now same person when working it means two power is raja and tama and notice in the kali it is black tama and raja red the red and black combine is kali friends if we don't understand this you won't be able to understand this is a unique way of expression really really unique and most of the time we think about oh no we should love each other and do that all of that only through lips we don't love each other we are inside we are so eager to criticize other blame other put down and only in the talk we say there is a modern way of doing things but in reality what is love love is action if the mother is not working for the child the child will die the single mother they are going and working earning money then purchasing food and looking after the children sending them to school the when the mother is can can she lie down all the time she is working she don't have time to talk and that is the two power combined that is raja and tama at that time sattva and only feeling i have to protect my child i have to love my child i have to look after my child that is the way it goes you know that one mother when she found that a jackal is attacking her baby the baby was crawling and it was in the village so a jackal came to uh, to that baby the mother took the baby on her shoulder but couldn't run away or fight with the jackal then the jackal started biting her you can imagine the mother standing over there the baby on her shoulder and the jackal is going on eating the flesh from her from her legs from her thigh from and like that she was trying protecting the baby so this is called mother power the tremendous love that love generates sacrifice the mother kali is that tremendous love and the love generates sacrifice she is sacrificing everything to protect the children our children 
So that is God is calling. We make the mistake. And someone is our God standing with the flute. Who oh, is a beautiful God? We we'll worship that. It's a cowardice. We don't understand that. <laughs> and the, our main thing is that's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna in those days when the whole world was criticizing because the Britishers were there, they couldn't understand. So they <clears throat> started criticizing the only God is mainly Kali. Why? Oh my God, the lady is not having any clothes and she is killing people. Not only that, she is so cruel. Then she is keeping the count by killing those people and making those heads as a garland. No, that was wrong thing. And majority of our people, so-called educated people, and they were shunning that. That was completely wrong. That's why the God, Supreme God, who took form in, in the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna form, he came and worshipped God as God. Unless and until we are understanding the Shakti, we won't be able to realize God Brahma. So he is telling like this, the Jnana Shakti, Icha Shakti and Kriya Shakti, knowledge power, desire power and action power. So these are the three. From there, the Jnana Shakti is called Vedanta. The Jnana Shakti, they only say each and everything is nothing but the manifestation of the consciousness. And they go to that extent and say this creation is nothing but your imagination. As you imagine in your dream and you pre create the dream world, the same way you are creating this world. Oh, this is my son, this is my daughter. This is my husband, this is my wife, this is my friend, this is my nation and I can give my life for my own country. All those things are your imagining and nothing else. Nothing else. So all imagination. And imagination and along with that emotion and you are doing like that. Just remove those two things, what happens? All of the same creation, same thing. So this is the Jnana Shakti we have to understand, the knowledge that gives us the concept of consciousness all pervading and it is not separating us. Then the Icha Shakti, the desire. In, I am not going to talk about the other religion. In the Hinduism, there are main three paths up there. And naturally, uh, you say that everything is consciousness, oh, is it? so I am not liking it. Is there anything else? So they get for other things. So they develop another. That is called first is Vedanta, then Tantra and Vaishnava. The Vaishnava, the completely duality. The God is there, God has come down in this way. I have to cook for God, I have to decorate God. All these combinations are there. So that is one thing. And the Tantra, they teach is how really you can develop those power. That's why Tantra is very difficult. Because when you know about electricity, the DC and AC power and these things happen at 440 volt, you should not touch and all those, all theoretical knowledge. But when you are acting, it is completely different. Yesterday I was reading the newspaper, one young boy, he was playing and he went to get a drinking water. Some kiosks were there, so he ran to that. Some people, they wanted to take the electric connection. They were wearing, I didn't give any warning or didn't protect the light wherever lying over there, this young boy went and he touched that and he died immediately. So hardly 12, 13 years old, young boy. So this is the tremendous action. And why those people didn't do that? Careless. They never thought that they, the young people may come. They don't know. So you have to be very, very careful when you are in action. 
accident may happen anytime. So that is called Kali Puja. Suppose you say Om, Om, Om all the time. Nothing wrong is going to happen. But if you are making mistake in the Kali Puja, you will be punished. So that is why people are afraid. But that Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna solved that problem. What he did, he made that tremendous power in such a way that you can go and call her as marble. The some people, those tantrics, they want to get the power. And there is a tremendous power that you can achieve. Even in the life of Bhagavan Swami Vivekananda, we were discussing yesterday evening that uh, how he made one person who was having two ghosts under his control. Swami Vivekananda went and met that person, he was in Hyderabad, and it was really true. And it so happened that uh, when that man he was telling, anything you want, I can bring it. It was my ghost that can go and bring it from any corner of the world. Vivekananda, it is not any other person. Then he told, can you bring some type of fruits which only grow in foreign countries? Not in India at all. With no time those fruits came. Not one or two. Bunch, huge. Not that it's a magic that he was holding inside and then take it out. No. It was the whole complete food. And Swamiji was astounded. How could you do it? But that power is there. And that tantra, that power, people misuse that power. And that is the problem. So here we find this tantra, this Kriya Shakti, which is Kali, then started slowly, slowly, people started using it for their own benefit. And it became a black magic. Some people started thinking that tantra means this is black magic. But what is Vedanta? Is the end knowledge. Veda is knowledge. Anta, the end. End knowledge. What is that? Ishavasham idam sarvam is that each and every place is nothing but that God, the consciousness. Everything is nothing but consciousness. But sometimes some people they'll be telling, oh, how can you eat fish? Because you are killing a being. But when you are uprooting a plant, you are also killing. But you don't see that, the suffering of the plant. So it is not, you are not reacting. When you are plucking the fruits, the trees are also suffering. But we don't feel that. So that is only the difference, manifestation of the suffering, manifestation of that particular condition. So we think, oh, no, no, we are all vegetarian. <laughs> they think they are not harming anyone. No, you are harming so much. <laughs> So that, that was proved by the science. There was one great scientist in our country who proved it, Jagadish Chandra Bose. He proved it. Now it has been accepted, each and everything, including these so-called the stone and the wood and the, the still, each and everything having the consciousness. Only the expression is very less. So we think, oh, these are all inner things now. It is not. Nothing ever inner, all consciousness. But the maximum consciousness, the manifestation of the consciousness is in human being. And that is why the importance has been given to human being. And what is Tantra? <clears throat> in Tantra they say, it is the knowledge that expresses everywhere. Tanyate vistaryate jnanam. Anena iti tantra. The tantra is the knowledge that ex everywhere. What is that knowledge? These two. The jnana shakti and the kriya shakti should be united. That's why they give the symbol, the Shiva and Kali. Shiva is the symbol of jnana shakti, the power of knowledge. He knows everything. All knowledge is in him. 
and the same Shiva when acting as a Kapi. The when the why Shiva himself could what? Why in the form of Mother Kali? Because creation, the human imagination. So they gave the form the a lady, a goddess, because the creation, sustenance. So it is Mother. So that is the way. And Vishnu, again it says, is that everywhere the Lord Vishnu. Like the Vedanta, they say it is everywhere consciousness. And they say everywhere Vishnu. That, that is the difference. But everywhere is all pervading. Tantra is also telling all pervading. Vedanta is telling all pervading. Vishnu is also telling all pervading. Only they are changing the name of that ultimate. What is the name? Brahman. Name Kali. And name Vishnu. That is the only difference. So it says that Parashuram Kalpa Shutra, it says there are 36 tattva is there. Moon Karuki Tattva Thai, this is a beautiful way the tantrics. In Bengal, the tantra was very prevalent. And in Bengali, there are all expressions through songs are also there. And it says, he's asking the mind, oh my mind, how you are trying to understand this? Moon Karuki Tattva Tare. So what is that Tattva? In Parashuram Kalpa Shutra, it says 36 Tattva. Shatakrimsha Tattvani Visham. What is this Tantra? Tantra is 36 uh, Tantra. Tattva. And the first is Shiva Tattva. And, and second is Shakti Tattva. Shiva and Shakti. The Tattva, Tattva means the ultimate reality. And this ultimate reality, 36 types. And of that, the first is Shiva and second is Shakti, it says. Now, who is Shiva? This is a, this is a very important question. Who is Shiva? Nishprapancha chide karma. Shiva Tattam Samirita Nishprapancha In that one who is not having any changes and That is Shiva Shiva is auspicious, why auspicious? Shiva is pure, what is that purity? It has no desire of this world No desire of this world, that is called Shiva Tattam now, in the stories also, and about the Shiva, you will find, he is constantly meditating. Now, Vishnu, who is in charge of the creation, he is thinking that if the Shiva is not activated, then how the creation will begin, because that all knowledge is there. Shiva is having all knowledge. And without the knowledge, nothing can be done. How to do it? Then all the stories are there that we like to listen, we like to hear, and we appreciate that one young lady came. She was the daughter of the Himalaya, and she saw the Shiva. She started serving, and she was also meditating. Slowly, slowly, Shiva started liking that, and all the stories. Because we like to see in that way, in our daily life also, in the society life, we also see that, so all the time, all the stories, the Hindus, they made in this way. Krishna, Radha, Shiva and Parvati, like that they say. But what is that in reality? It is the Shakti, the desire, slowly came into him. I am all alone. And for a long period of time, let me enjoy how he created out of his own, many. The knowledge, it divided many many things and that became the Shakti it says that first is Shiva Tattva what is who is the Shiva Nish Prapancha Chida Eka Atma Prapancha means the five combination of the five it is not that this Prapancha Chida Chida means the knowledge Eka the only one Atma the consciousness 
So this is the Shiva. And what is Shakti? If you know the definitions, then so wonderful it says, Prapancha Vasana Rupa. Vasana means desire has come. The three power, one is knowledge, another desire, and third action. Now action will, that it will take place when there is desire. When there is no desire, there is no action. I don't like to go anywhere. So there is no action. I like to go somewhere. Then I have to purchase ticket, I have to collect, call a cab, I have to go, all these actions will come. So first is the desire. So who is the Shakti? It says, Prapancha Vasana Rupa. Who is Shiva? Nisprapancha. Ni means negative. Prapancha, the combination of all these five. Eka Atma, Chit Eka Atma is the Shiva. And Kali, Prapancha Vasana Rupa Shakti Iti Abhidiyate. The same thing when the Came the desire that became Shakti. The Shiva and Shakti are the same. The Shiva and Kali are not separate, are not different. So we think the Shiva is this and Kali is that. Then there's the stories how the Kali became that Shiva uh, one day the, he was talking with his wife. The Shiva is all white, like a snow. And Kali was that the uh, his wife was not that much. So one day they were sitting together and the Shiva, the husband was having some, as they always do, the husband and wife having some fun. And he told, look at you, you are so black when you are putting your hand on me, as if the snake has come on the snow. And she became very angry. And she told, okay, now I will become the golden color. You are white, but I have become golden. So she started meditating and Gauri. Gauri means the golden hue, color, the lady came. All the stories. And we love those stories. And we think that is true. It is not. We have to go beyond that. We have to find the truth. The truth is Nishprapancha and Vitprapancha with the desire. Now, who is the Shakti? Prapancha Vasana Rupa. Shakti Idiyavidiyate. And who are the Jeevas? Now they are the goal, Shiva and Shakti. And we have to reach over there. But who are we? If we don't have the same type of quality, we won't be able to go over there. So we must have to have the same quality. So who are the Jeevas? It says, Kunchukam. Achadana, Tena, Avritam, Shiva, Eva, Jiva. This Kunchukam, Kanchuma Abhyan is ignorance. Avritam is covering the soul. The souls are covered with the ignorance. We started our talk that uh, the ego came. When the ego came, we got separated. So that is the, when the ego came, we got separated and that is the problem. Now who are the jivas? It is the ignorance, the ego, that I am this. And when we put our finger on us and say, I am this, I do not know what is this body. When I was little baby, like the small kid came, and then this baby will grow up. And suppose we so show him the picture that it is your picture. And if we don't tell that it is your picture, that baby won't be able to recognize his own body. Our small child lying on the lap of the mother, oh, this is you, this is you, and oh, I, I was like this. But suppose somebody is not telling, you won't be able to recognize. And we put our finger, this is me, this is me. And what is this ego? This is foolishness. We always associate with the body, the body we do not know. Our mind, mind is constantly changing. The children are thinking in a way, 
grown up people thinking in a different way and elderly people are thinking in a different way why the thoughts are changing how can i recognize that thought is mine me you cannot so that is why it says kunchukam abhitam kunchukam this ignorance covering the consciousness the consciousness which is always present over there the consciousness is covered so that is the way we understand this is the jiva now we will conclude and it goes in this way and uh, this our creation shada trinshatatvami and out of that only shiva that shiva is shiva padavacha parama shiva eva kevala now when we talk about the shiva there are two different types of shiva in the vedanta also they say the two different types of brahman one brahman it never does anything that is para brahma is a calm and composed and no desire no action and no manifestation that is called parama brahma next come the saguna brahma the brahma with some qualities so from there only creation comes in the tantra we find parama shiva the parama shiva is not having any desire his body is pale it is not white because there is no quality we have to remember you know friend that is the problem with the hinduism we have to remember some of the basic thing like three qualities sattva raja and tama every time the combination and all these are making differences the sattva guna is a guna is a quality good quality but still it is a quality the moment there is a quality the obviously there will be duality oh this man is a very good person that means you have the conception of bad otherwise how can you say that is good if you don't have the conception of bad and you cannot compare with the bad you cannot say it is good the children don't have the conception of good and bad but they are all same suppose you are putting water in the somebody's mouth and helping him or you are not for the little baby it is both the same it is a good and bad it doesn't understand the similarly the moment we say good we have to understand this the moment we say good we have the conception of bad so this is the way we have to understand and it says the what is this shiva tattva and shiva tattva says it is the adi matattva adi matattva is the basic tattva and the chit swarup of atma is the shiva srishiksha prapancha vasana roopa shakti iti ditya tattva the second is ichha si srishiksha prapanch vasana rupa that the moment the desire comes to create something same shiva without any desire and shiva with desire i should create and kriya shakti rupa the second tattva and this is the way the whole thing now to conclude bhagwan sri ramakrishna said that whom you call brahman i call kali how it is possible this is a great statement revolutionary statement those who are in the students of philosophy they will wonder how could he say that the brahman is completely different because it is consciousness all pervading and kali is a completely different because we know that it has a form and it is active but bhagavan sri ramakrishna say can you differentiate a fire and its burning capacity 
See, here you have to understand fire and its burning capacity. If you take out the burning capacity of the fire, it is no more fire. It looks like fire. So the fire and the burning capacity of the fire are the same. Milk and its whiteness. If the milk become red, that means you have added some color into it. It cannot be. The whiteness and the milk, you cannot differentiate. Similarly, the Shiva in action and Shiva with knowledge, you cannot differentiate. The Shiva without action is Brahman. Shiva with action is Kali. And that is why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, if you call the Kali the mother, if you understand that, it becomes easy. In one of the sentences he's telling, if you like to realize Brahman, you have to go through duality. The some of the people, nowadays I notice, they are starting right from the beginning from the non-duality. They think that they are all capable to do that and they will end up nowhere. Because if you don't have the basic knowledge, you can reach nowhere. Some of the people like me, I can sing, because some of the idea and the conception of tuning is there, I can sing. But I am not a singer. Because I have not, I am not trained into that. Similarly, some people, when they are listening to talk of the Vedanta, Oh, I am Brahman, I am not this body, I am consciousness. They understand, to some extent, intellectually. But in their spiritual life, they are not going to be benefited. Why? Because they are not trained up. So what is the training? Training is, there are three powers. Knowledge, desire, and action. Now, I am meditating this is also within action i am meditating who is meditating i am meditating this is not this is non duality this is very very dual i am meditating so you are associated with the body you are associated with the situation so that is the way you are also not practicing advaita you are practicing duality. Understand that. And then secondly, you have to give up that conception that I am the body. And you go to into your mind. And then third, you go to the consciousness. So Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, I, yesterday only I was reading, is very clearly mentioning through duality, you can go to non-duality. How? He gives another thing. If you are praying to the mother, mother, please give me the knowledge of Brahman. Mother will give you the knowledge of Brahman. Because the mother, she is ready to give both. If you want, give me success, give me money, give me gold, give me name, fame, power, she is ready to give. And if you say, I want to know you, mother, and that also you will get. So that is the way we have to understand that so this gives both. Friends, tomorrow is the Kali Puja. I will invite you, please come and try to understand God as Kali. You're not misunderstanding, but understanding through the light of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Because I got really hard when the people they say, oh na Kali Murti we should not present before. The American society, they will be very scared to see that. But I found so many Americans that love Kali. And not only that, one lady used to come, she used to meditate on Goddess Kali. She has a statue of Goddess Kali. From where she got, she never visited India, but she is practicing worshiping Goddess Kali. And somehow, something we have to show. So, matter here. I told him, we don't give matter here. Goddess Kali is not having the matter here. So anyway, they are keeping the matter here, but they love Goddess Kali. Because the power, the Shakti, but the problem is, they think Shakti means all the problem will be solved. It will.
but the worldly problem can never be solved. Can never be. One problem is over, another problem will come. So if we think that in the world we will be completely happy, completely happy, you will be happy. In the world, but not completely. To completely, if you want complete happiness, complete joy, you have to come to the left hand side of the marble. You go down and see that big picture, go right hand side and left hand side. If you want complete happiness, you have to cut your ego. The moment you cut your ego, you become God yourself. Thank you. So, once again, you will be chanting from the mantra and you can do it. So, it's a two, it's a two part question. Sukhama Ghosh is saying, I am initiated in Sri Ramakrishna order. I am blessed to give seva to Ladu Gopal. I feel that Akur and Ladu Gopal are manifestation of one Brahman. I am on the right path. Am I on the right path? Second part question. I am confused because I think I have mixed Vedanta and Vaishnava. If you have understood that you are confused about Vedanta and Vaishnava, so you take one. And Vedanta also has three schools. One is Advaita, Vishishta Advaita and Dvaita. And this Dvaita, they worship. See, our all images we are worshipping. Tomorrow we will be worshipping Goddess Kali. We are practicing Vedanta. At the same time, we are doing that. Because that is not going against our uh, philosophy. It is supporting us. So this is no problem. And your first question, the Nadu Gopal you like, of course you can. And you must have read the biography of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. And there was a widow lady. She used to worship goddess, I, I mean Nadu Gopal. Nadu means the baby Gopal. And she found that Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is that Gopal. So she became famous as a mother of Gopal in Bengali, Gopal's mother. And there, Gopal is ma. Now that Gopal was Sri Ramakrishna himself. You are on the right path. Please continue. Thank you. Okay. Now, before I conclude, I'd like to show you this our new magazine has come out in that magazine. And uh, I think you can see that, right? And in this magazine, uh, different articles are there. This time we're a little late because of many other things were there. So we are a little late. So this is a symbol of the fireworks. And the fireworks, it shows that it is round, right? The fire, it is a round fire. But in reality, it is not. It is only one fire and someone is moving it so fast and it looks like the round fire at the background of the black sky. So over this, there's a beautiful article there as one of the Brahmacharinis, she has presented, very unique, very unique idea. It is only one and it shows as many. And what we see with our own eyes, a round fire ball, a ring, fire ring. It is not actually. We are seeing that, but still it is not correct. It is not real. So it's a very beautiful, interesting article. You can pick up some of the, of the three dollars, I think. You can pick up and read it. And of course, online it is available. So please chant along with me once again, and we conclude. Kali Kali. Mahakali, Kali ke, Parameshwari, Sarvananda, Kare Devi, Narayani, Namastute,